All right, Ross, so I bought some Fido. What do I do with it now? Well, one of the most commonly asked questions we have or that I'm asked is, all right, I want Fido. I want to start applying it to my tank. How much and how often do I use it? Well, there's two major considerations to consider at first. One is how often should you be dosing Fido? And for that, I would invite people to consider how coral reefs receive Fido in the wild. There is a tide that comes in once, twice, often multiple times a day. It brings with it plankton, Fido, all these other things. So I think smaller doses of Fido more periodically, uh, increased frequency of feedings at a smaller volume per feeding is the way to go to give your corals one, a continuous supply of the nutrition, so it's not like a big boom and bust of uh, materials and food entering the water. And two, so that you could potentially sustain an atmospheric level of algae and other things that are depending on that algae. And so that population of greater planktonic life can remain stable long term in the aquarium and be feeding the corals continuously. The second major question is which phyto should I pick? And whereas there are specific applications of the various phytoplankton species, I recommend applying as many different types as you can, uh, feeding them at the moment of feeding. They don't necessarily store fantastically all together, but the, when fed all at once in the aquarium, they complement each other's nutritional profile wonderfully. The T. isocrises lutea, for instance, has a lot of golden fats, polyunsaturated fatty acids, but very little of the methyl cholesterols that the petrocellamus has, and they don't have any of the carotenoids that the rhodomonas has. So when it comes to a generalized consideration of how much phyto to feed and how often, we've prepared a generalized dosing chart here. And whereas most phytoplankton products kind of generalize phytoplankton feedings as a per gallon affair, that's really not exactly, uh, there's a lot more room for subtlety. We have here three different criteria on our sheet where it's, are you feeding a fish only system where you're only trying to keep a small amount of zooplankton alive to keep your overall tank stable? Do you have a regular coral tank that's just starting off? It doesn't have too many filter feeders yet. Or is your system like El Chapo below me where it is full of corals, cleanup crew, copepods, all things that will more or less produce a planktonic plankton dietary budget that needs to be satisfied if things are gonna be stable long term. So, for an example, we're going to be feeding El Chapo today. Now, this is connected to a much larger volume of water, but for this intents and purposes, we're going to be treating it as if it is a 200-gallon aquarium. So what we've done here is we've killed the return pumps. There's no more water entering the skimmers. It's not entering the sump or the mechanical filtration. The UV sterilizers are off. It's just the corals and then flow from the power heads dispersing the water around the 200 gallons of the aquarium. So. For a daily feeding, we're going to treat this like it is a fully stocked coral tank. And for 200 gallons, we can see that our recommended daily dose is about 1,000 milliliters of algae. So about one of these bottles per day for a very large system like this when you're trying to have the purpose of driving production, getting as much coral growing and as satisfied as possible. So we'll be doing that now. So uh, I like to turn the lights on to white for this so you can get a nice little visual show. But you can see here, as the cells enter, they will be distributed by the power heads, and then they will become, uh, they will start to mingle in the water column. And when they mingle, they are essentially stimulating the feeding response of the corals. They are exciting the copepods, the amphipods, everything inside the tank, which in return is exciting the corals. Essentially, what you're trying to do is stimulate the feeding frenzies that occur in, wa in the wild. So the tide is coming in and with it, a huge surge of planktonic nutrition. And with that surge comes an equal surge in zooplankton. Um, so even the corals that aren't directly consuming the algae are rapidly consuming the big boom of rotifers, copepods, ciliates, everything else that uh, will bloom in return from dosing of the algae. And in return, we also know that anything that the corals are eating, as far as those other zooplanktons have recently gut loaded and inoculated with all the different golden fats, methyl cholesterols and pigments that we know are contained within our single strain pure algae cultures. Coral reefs are relatively unique because they are deserts, they are clear water, but the most productive ecosystems of the world are the ones with cloudy brown water. We don't want that for our acros obviously, but 
I would encourage you, invite you to consider what happens when you mix all the paints together, all the different colors in the world, you get brown. That is the soup, the goodness that we want to have delivered purposefully and controllably to our tanks to embrace that beauty and facilitate growth. Thanks for all that information. And will this chart be available on our website? It most certainly is. Right, Come and thanks. visit it. Thank you. Thank you.